Um, so the agenda, we'll talk about the computers um, and system availability because that impacts developers' ability to hit um, <coughs> their schedules. We'll talk about NCO staffing, and then we'll go through the quads. And I just want to remind everybody what we've been doing the last few times is I showed the plan I had at the end of the last quarterly showing what we were going to do. Um, and then we go through and we only discuss those quads. Um, the, the cutoff I did this time was if you had more than a three-week delay in the schedule we published last quarterly or if you slipped into the next quarter uh, we'll, or you had another issue, we'll discuss your quad. Otherwise, we won't discuss your quad. So if you don't see yourself here, don't worry. Um, and then the last slide shows what the plan is now going forward. So current state of the system, I'm playing a little bit with how many slides I need to show this huge system we have. But um, these are the high water marks for the production machine. Bottom left corner yeah, left is phase one. Um, if you recall, our strategy was we were, with upgrades, we were moving systems from phase one to phase two, top. And now we're moving systems with upgrades from phase two and phase one onto the craze. So phase one, you'll see we still have um, the GFS, the NAM, CFS and the WAVE models, um, among some other smaller systems still running there. Uh, phase two, we're starting to fill up now. The GEFs and the SHREF and the HER all run on phase two. And you'll see at the top, what hangs down from the top is work we're doing to transition into operations. What comes up from the bottom is the NSEP production suite. So on phase two, you can see we have the GFS um, and the GDAS, the upgrade going in in May. We have the RAP and the HER upgrade going in in the summer. Um, we have the Global RTOVs. We hope to put in someday when the Navy's ready. Um, and then down on the Cray, you will see the green. We have the first system that's operational on the Cray, which is the high-res window. And then the one system uh, we're starting to run in parallel is the national water model. So that is the production machine today. So if I interpret this correctly, then, so the are the, the parallels up top running in their correct time slots? They are, yes. OK, so that space between the GDAS and the SHREF. Yes. <laughs> that, that means we're almost already at the high water mark mm -hmm. when the G, G, GFS gets upgraded. Correct. But the one thing to note, you've got, you've got double HER running on there also. So this right. pink down at the bottom is okay. going to come out. But yes, we have to be careful in here. Um, if we were to put something on phase two. But like I said, all the upgrades, the, the NAM is going to go on to phase two, but then everything else is going to start moving to the cray. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried right now that we're going to fill that up. Okay. But we do have to be mindful of it. OK, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We're not, phase two is not the end. Correct. I forgot about the cray. OK, got it. Thank you. Yep. So that's the production machine. Any other questions on that? A uh, snapshot of the development machine. Uh, I'm moving things around a little. Sorry. Phase one and phase two, so the IBM components are at the top. Um, this was for Monday, I think. Uh, so it is a weekday. Um, you can see a lot of GFS running in the run-up to that implementation, the NAM. Uh, the bottom is the Cray. Uh, we <laughs> um, the Crays are running, running much better than they were in January and February, um, but this particular day we came back with the system and had a little issue with some software, so that's why you see it took the H Wharf guys a little bit of the day to get going again. So the <coughs> so I guess EMC, you're still doing retrospective runs of the GFS and prep for the implementation. I thought that was complete. G uh, th this is um, support for the hurricane reruns. Uh, because we have a GFS for that? Well, we, we lost we lost some of the data on HPSS. That's where okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's exactly the piece that we still be running. So I'm just curious in terms of an allocation going forward, how much longer you have to do that because we we haven't gotten this meeting into that allocation looking forward prop point yet. Uh, we can we can talk. I could, about I could double check. But I don't know the exact number, but, but that's the reason why we're still running. All right. And then the national water models is I think the first time I've seen it. Is that going to be the operational footprint? Mm. That's closer. What you see at the top there, we don't have it all running yet on the CRAE system. I think that's fairly close. Yeah, okay. it's up to about 200 sometimes a day. Mm -hmm. All right, it's the first I've seen that. Okay, good. Okay. Any other questions on the development machine? 
Yes. Is the, is the top scale of the cray the actual total number? It is. What, what happened, so there were originally more compute nodes, and then we've been turning some of those compute nodes into more like service nodes where we could run multiple jobs. Okay. So I think it was originally 20, 40 compute nodes, um, but now we've lowered that because of transitioning some nodes to a different type. Okay. Just a small comment. You just may want to put a statement on this, these slides about scale. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just so that people understand that, you know, the Cray is not scaled to phase two, is not a, maybe phase two is scaled to phase one, I don't know. But just because... So let me ask you, is it more, is it better to see all three on, at once? I, I kind of so, like this, but the, you just have to be cognizant of the scaling. Right, I tried to get phase one and phase two, they're according to each other, but then to make the Cray big enough, it, <laughs> there's a real estate... We'll talk problem. afterwards. <laughs> I, like what you're, I like what you're doing. Go ahead. If you just put a note on there... Which <laughs> Not to scale. <laughs> Fraction of the machine, fraction of computer is so. What percentage? So, um, so many percent compute here, so many computers. Yeah. The apples are apples. That would scale it for you. Okay. Thanks. So, so I'm going to ask my typical quarterly question. This is Dave Misha. Uh huh. Are are we uh, are we at all investigating the possibility of uh, looking at the uh, usage trend on a total monthly level? We are. I don't think I'm going to have. Uh, some sample graphs for you by the HPC rack on the 11th, okay. but we are looking at that. Perfect. Thank Good. you. Uh huh. I thought you were going to ask about the white space. Darn it. Okay, monthly developer availability. You know, I do want to say one thing because okay. I think it's important. The, um, the fact that we're still using the GFS, we're still running a lot of GFS retros to support the H4 implementation. <laughs> so when we do our build out of allocation, the backup machine you know, going forward, that's a nuance that we don't f always fully appreciate, right? Because when I brought this out a month ago, we don't appreciate. I didn't include this sort of thing. So that's, that's <coughs> an additional burden on the machine. It's not for the GFS upgrades, it's for the h -worth upgrade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are kind of the, the interdependencies. But as, as we go through reorganizing the way we do the implementation, one of, one of the three major things we're looking at is this integral picture. Exactly. So, so the, the, the charters for the new implementation, although we'll still have to work out all the details, should have this kind of detail in that. Got it. No, it's good. Just an observation. Okay. Thanks. Um, monthly, de monthly developer availability, um, hopefully the development organizations are using this to figure out their code delivery dates. Um, January and February are abysmal. And I put stars because Right now, um, those of you that have worked on the Crays know that we had a lot of problems with submitting jobs in January and February, and that's really what you're seeing in that those numbers are right around 60% is that in our number at this point, we have told IBM the systems were 100% unusable for most of those months. That's all still under negotiation, but um, that's why these numbers are so low is because the Crays, um, we could not reliably schedule jobs during those two months. That has since been addressed, so March will be a much better number. Although we did have some minor hiccups still. Yes. So, but it, it's going the, it's going the right way, but it's not completely solved either. So just truth in advertising. Yep. Is this the integration of phase one, two, and T O four? Yeah. Okay. You just throw, just annotate the slide to be sure that it's it's um the it's comprehensive. The core issues were very specific, right, Pecky? Mm -hmm. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't so much an integration of the three. Correct, right. yeah, tying them together. What I mean by integration is that I'm, I'm looking at one number <coughs> um, and just let us know that that one number is representative of the cumulative across the entire system. Yep. I know that you, the biggest hit came from the IBM piece. The the phase, piece. phase two will probably run it fine. Right, and, and the Cray piece is so much right. larger than it's the other. It's just, a, just yep. an annotation. Okay. Yep, got it. Okay, so yes. So one of the things you're going to see in the quads is some of the folks that are trying to deliver code to run on the craze had serious issues because if you don't have a system, you can't do development. Um, my staffing slides, uh, no change in the SPA team. We've got the six um, folks right now. My two FTE vacancies are in RADS right now. Um, the new note is um, a, another component of getting any model upgraded is you have to get the data out for the 30-day evaluation. My data flow team 
um, basically went is has gone down to one Fed who's the team lead and a few new contractors. So that is right now where our issue is, is that there, we can't get the data flow part of the model upgrades through as fast as we normally would. How long have we been waiting on the to recruit the data flow person? Since late last year. We got the PDs. Seven. Yeah, the PDs got approved yesterday. <laughs> you hear that, Dave? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I know. It's, it's the reality of the hiring situation. Everybody wants things faster, but, um, you know, this, this is a problem. I mean, right now, it's, it only affected one of the quads I'm going to show you right now, and we're juggling very carefully. But, but I'm definitely having to say, Dataflow, you need to do this one first and then this one, you know, based on some priorities. Also, um, sometimes I am having to ask the development organizations, particularly those that submit a lot of upgrades, to prioritize them. Because if I have, if I don't have a spa immediately available, I use that. We'd use that to determine how to staff it. So, so what, your your uh, data flow is down to how many people? You said? It's going to be just the team. We have one. So we have one vacant. No, two vacant FTEs. The third FTE is about to go on an NRAP assignment. So it just leaves the team lead. And then luckily, I have three contractors I got because of IDP. Um, but all of them are new. <laughs> so the only question I'd have to ask is, from a organizational perspective, I know it's uh, you, you should ask your perhaps ask the question about uh, whether that's the the, a, uh, the right time and place for a RAP assignment. We let's take it offline, David. No, I know, I know, uh, but I yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. The, so the, the only other comment there might be uh, I know there's been um, it's data flow is a lot more specialized than the spa piece, but I know there's been times when if we're surging with uh, certain implementations, you've kind of taken on people like Diana Stokes and others, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did a little cross training between the spas and data flow to see if. They could, the spas could help with a little of the upfront work. So, yeah, so okay. far it's it's working. I just got to make sure not to burn out the teams. <laughs> yeah, understood. Okay. Okay. So this is the picture okay. that I presented at the end of the December quarterly, and that's how it turned out. So, okay. So go back. All right. So that's what we looked. That was the plan. That was the plan. last time we met in December. Yes. So any difference? Can you overlap them? <laughs> If you, if you toggle forward, what we see is a change in plan. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So. And we're going to zoom in by quarter, so. Okay, go back. Forward. And those, those projected end dates from last time are represented in the new plan with a letter, right? Correct. In the new, so this oh. end, date, end date on the December slide get, got a Z in the last colored box. Right. On this slide right here. So look at the blue in the middle. That's uh, the to her. Yes, that helps. So, go back. <laughs> so the plan was in December that they would go in the middle of May. Q3. Yep. Right? That early May. Yep. And now it has slipped <coughs> a month or so. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Which one's that, Bill? That's the uh, the dark blue bars in the middle. The yeah. wrap. The wrap and the her. Wrap and the, and the her. Yes, yeah, at least a month. And I do also move the front of the color to reflect. So I'm, right. we're picking on the wrap in the herb. But, you know, you can see the blue started in January. Right. Now the blue started in the end of February, which is when we actually got the code. So <laughs> and then you're going to go window, window down into each quarter. And, but, but again, this is just kind of for a high level visibility Correct. to see mm -hmm. how things are, are slipping. <laughs> A perfect world, there'd be no slip. Correct. See a Z at the end of the bar here. That yes. Means they're doing yes. Really and if, close, if you right. see an, a Z at the end of the bar here, you're not going to see the quad. Like the NAPES and the C, those beige bars, yes. the NAPES and CPPA. So you would expect that week to see more as you went down if they were farther out. Not necessarily. Huh? The farther out quarters stay, stay nice because people don't know their code delivery is going to slip yet. Yeah, exactly. 
it's, we see the slips more about a quarter out or so. Okay. Um, and then the new stuff gets added at the bottom. Okay, ready? So the Z, the Z again? The Z is what we, so in December when I was here at the very end of my presentation and I said, okay, this is what we're going to do, the Z got put at the end of that bar. The plan that we had last quarter, Dave. Uh, okay, got it, got it, got it, yeah. got it. Got okay, it. it'll, it'll make more sense with the zoomed in one. So, okay, so let's get into it. Q2. So, zoomed in, this was what we said for Q2. The box shows you Q2. This is what we said in December. This is what we said in December. 56%. Woo! We've gone from 13 to 33 to 56. But... Um, I'm not going to sit here and argue we got better at anything. I will point out I sat here December 22nd-ish and told you I was going to implement a bunch of stuff as soon as we got back from Christmas. So we did, like six things. So we were stacked to succeed <laughs> this quarter. Um, air quality went in, and then NACE and CCPA, assuming you approve this afternoon, go in Tuesday. So those were, our, those were the ones we hit, um, and we'll go through the rest of them to show what's going on. Okay, so the biggest one, uh, the NOS Bay model is the blue. Yes. It's clear that the developers just aren't ready and they've, they've pushed it down, right? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that one okay. at the quad. Right. Um, the other thing to note for this picture right here, we have all of the code for everything on here except for the MAG and the NOS Bay model. So they are all in process being worked. All right. Okay. So first one is CPC International. This is the um, CPC does web processing imagery, puts it on the web, and um, they've been doing it in a quasi-prod mode. We're trying to pull that into production. Um, this one's been around a while, um, and uh, w part of it is it's, it's been going, and then it kind of takes a lower priority. Um, but at this point, I think we're pretty much ready. Steven's doing a little more testing, and we hope to implement that in mid-April. This is the one I told you we weren't going to come brief you because we decided it was more of an infrastructure item. Okay. Okay. So, Bill? Yeah. Here's a question for you. Uh, you have a CPC resource doing development type of work within CPC, creating enhancements to, to new things. Is that somebody that could be working on NA with? Uh, no. <coughs> sorry, Dave. No. It's Dave Witz, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. This is uh, this is funded <coughs> by USAID uh, ah, contract. It. Okay. Got it, Dave. Thank you. Good. Okay. All right. Next up is the mag. Um, the issue with the mag here is that. Um, NCO had developed the code, and then we ran into the January blizzard and had performance issues, and so they, they pulled back the code and um, increased the scope to try to address some infrastructure issues that, uh, that um, led to slow loading. Yeah, There's that, that footnote is still on the MAG page. It is. It, so it's this still will resolve that. This will resolve that and some other infrastructure work they're, they're doing. Um, and also this also... The scope also increased recently because we have to get this stuff shipped out to Boulder to have the backup to the back. Okay, so if I could, if you could go back a couple to the, uh, the blow up there. Uh -huh. Okay, so the mag's on the bottom, it's the last bar. Yes. So if I understand this correctly, in December we had planned to implement this in February. Correct. February. Okay. And so we, we pulled it back. My question is did we spend any spa resources trying to get this thing in and then pull uh -huh. it back? Yes, we actually were almost ready to implement what they had given us, and we pulled it back. So we spent hot spa resources on it with no outcome. Mm -hmm. We're still actually running that version in parallel right now. Oh, that, okay, I want to talk about that later. Okay. Because um, we're trying, you know, this gives us an opportunity to, to analyze that, right? So, mm -hmm. again, to me, that, you know, trying to avoid... We work across the board. Yep. So the lessons learned from that <coughs> would be useful. Okay. Hey, hey, Bill. What's that? Bill, perhaps the other question along with that, and I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but um, the other question to ask would be 
what type of uh, overlap in terms of um, development and testing resources with the NAWIPS crew was there on this effort as well? And is it is a, it's the same branch. It's all in SDB, but um, they are separate contract staff. Okay. So it's separate, um, totally separate people working on it? Totally separate people. I can't speak to the money How about issue. the test? How about the testing? Totally separate? Um, Did Bradley have to deal with this? That's what I'm. That's what I'm hemming and hawing about. I'm not sure, Dave. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. That would be the one area of potential overlap. Okay. Okay. Next okay. one up was NGAC. NGAC flipped about a month. And this one was actually, this was the one that did take a hit because of the data flow team staffing. But, you know, again, you know, I had priorities from Hendrick, and based on that, we decided where to put the data flow priorities. So, um, but that will go in the beginning of April. Just slipped into the next quarter. Uh, I think we're briefing you next week on that. Next up is SWPC Geospace, which we're also calling SMWF. Space modeling something framework. Sorry, um, and this one has been challenging as well because we um, it is a different paradigm from the way the other models run. It runs all the time, and when it gets input from the satellite, it needs to restart itself. Um, we also did have a situation that is not um, not alone to Swipsy that you know. We always want to add one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, and so eventually we worked together and said, no, we're done. It's going to be a cutoff date. <laughs> and then that we have progressed since then, and um, we are in the 30-day and middle of April. Um, and the other thing was SWPSI actually asked to push out the implementation a little bit farther than normal because they're in a conference. Um, so scheduling-wise on their end, they wanted to push into mid-May to brief and, and then implement. So, But we are in a good place. The 30 days have been going smoothly. So I think we're, I think this one will go off the charts for next Yeah, I do understand this is the first of its kind in any operational environment. So there are unique challenges in regard to that. But in terms of the decision, the scope, when we had our last implementation meeting in December, <coughs> were they debating the scope at that point in time or did it come in January? Uh, we, got the, we got the code in the fall. So we had the code at that point, and then there were a lot of back and forth so, code changes. You know, my, my point is that if, if there's a question about scope, it should be raised up to Milo. Okay. Because if Swifty is delaying, 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 delaying uh, based on scope, you know, we, this goes to the changes in the implementation practice that we want to identify hard cutoffs so that we don't end up delaying, 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 taking up more and more and more, more spa time and, mm -hmm. you know. So if you get in a situation where you're have, there's a debate about scope and decisions aren't getting made timely, then you bring it up to me. Okay. I think, you know, in this case when I got on the phone with Brent and said, what's going on? He and I both said, we're done. So um, I, I think SWPC management was in agreement okay. on this. Um, okay. Ah, so this is the NOS Bay model. Um, story here. <laughs> so there's right after it. There's two quads here. There's the update to the Great Lakes and specifically Lake Erie, and then there was the upgrade to the Bay models where they were going to put they were going to consolidate the modeling core framework for all of the various bays that we run. Um, the timing of them was such that these two were going to come in together, and we decided to bundle them together made more sense from a testing um, and resource perspective. And you decided that when? Oh. Last fall, last. Remember? Six months ago, but a long time ago. A long time ago. Before the this last meeting three months ago. Okay. All right. Um, so we got the code for everything and started working it, and the ROMs had code stability issues. Um, it, it would not run stably. NOS was working it. Uh, at a certain point, we just said that's because the the Great Lakes is actually an AOP milestone for NOS, and we said, that's it, we got to cut fish and bait, whatever it is. Um, we split them apart, we sent ROMs back. Bait or something. Bait or fish. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You should send me on vacation. Um, so uh, we sent this back to NOS, and they're reworking some of it. They had to do a little more evaluation. 
And what I've done with this one at this point is um, pushed it out because with resources, I have an NOS spa, and right now they're, we're working on two NOS projects. So I told NOS, we will pick this up when we're done with the other two. Okay, so is this another example where spa time was spent on an implementation that yes. got pushed? So wasted work or? Um, partially. It, it, partially, definitely partially. If that same spa picks it up when it comes back in, there will be a familiarity there. It should go faster. <coughs> if they don't, um, yeah, it was. Uh, the, the other thing was this: the spa worked with them a lot to rework a lot of this because it was m much more fractured than it needed to be, given how similar all these codes are. Um, so I think that was a beneficial. That was beneficial work. Um, but to all right, Bill, Bill. The way I kind of view that is like it, it's the risk you kind of take going deeper back into the development cycle, but the, the payoff in general is once things are ready, it's a much faster flow because you have the standards worked out kind of earlier in the development process. Yeah, so I get it. I'm just balance. trying to do an assessment of how much rework we end up doing because that's yeah. part of our intent for the revised implementation process is to avoid the need for rework. Well, and I, yeah, and I think I think the question would be like, it depends on how you characterize rework because if if this I would probably I would put money down <coughs> if the spas weren't involved early on then it's likely that they would have had to rework the scripts to get yeah. to the standards anyhow per, per, perhaps so it's it's a, okay. it's a little tough to judge that but I think I I wouldn't equate it as like totally wasted work if we missed it because it, it does accelerate later on in the cycle. One thing you're seeing with all of these implementations right now, you know, in the last year we we did a massive update to the implementation standards. We, we did a big push to publishize them to everybody and to say PM, PMB, IDSB is now going to enforce these. And yeah. so it's been a lot of work for the developers. We've also set up kind of a new structure where the models are set up so it's somewhat seem it's Seamless whether they run on phase one or phase two, more from a scripting perspective, even the Cray, it's not seamless, but there's a lot of changes we have enforced to make the whole suite more standardized and more flexible with the system we have now. So it's a lot of work for the developers, and, and they all are, are doing a really good job, but that's, you're seeing a lot of rework for that, you're seeing a lot of delays for that, but the good thing, kind of what Dave's saying is, the next time all of these come around, they've put in that hard work. And so yeah. the next round for each one of these, I expect our eight weeks to be a lot shorter. Yeah. Understood. Okay, so then the other one that I mentioned was the Great Lakes. And this one, um, we're actually almost to the end of the 30-day. Uh, it, it has been smooth. It just um, got held up by the other, by, the, by us combining it. So this will go in the end of April. Okay. 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 And then my favorite, the Art House Global. So this this lovely model is totally ready to implement, and we would love to implement it, but we have to wait for the Navy to upgrade their model because our um, input comes from the Navy. So when is the Navy going to make the change? Maybe this quarter, because now they need to update their deterministic model before they'll update. The heck? We, we, we have seen this with uh, the Art of Global the first time I've ever around, that the Navy has been significantly less efficient with estimating when they implement than we are. But we had to, we had to plan for the original timeline. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we are ready and we're waiting right now. And they were ready, they just found a bug right near the end. So, I mean, I'm glad we didn't go. And the thing you'll see is this delay cascades into the next version of the RTOBS Global, which was pushed out because we can't do it till we can get this one in. So I just stuck it at the end of the We course. went through every bar. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm All right. Got it. I didn't talk about the ones that were close. That were Not a target, week. right. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, Q3. So again, the box shows you what where Q3 is. Um, this shows you where we are now. The red stars indicate that I have code in hand. 
for these models, and we are working on that. Um, if the bar is hatched out, that's a quad I showed you last quarter early that um, the development organization has pulled at this point. Where's the hatch? Where's the hatch? Yeah. I, I see NAM base moss, the ECMW moss. Um, if my eyes are right. Yep, and the wave moss. Yeah, the wave moss. Yeah, Where? the wave moss. The, the blue one from the bottom. It is. It's really. I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I can't see that. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm not in love with that way of marking them, but. Yeah, I can see that's right. Sorry. It's okay. And then again, you know, the Z is where we said we would do it last quarterly. <laughs> the end of the bar is where it is now. And the end of the bar is where it is now. Um, so now we'll go into the, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about the GFS, because look, one week. GFS is on target. Yeah. So <laughs> what is the question mark? I guess I am talking about the GFS. Um, so the question marks are P-Surge. Um, uh, so P-Surge has been due for a while. And I don't have a good feel for the code delivery date I've been given. So at this point, I have said to tell anybody who's dependent on P-Surge, we will implement it as soon as we can fit it in when we get it. This is really dependent. The, the storm surge watch warning yeah. is really dependent on this. Yes, I know. But I've been, there have been this, this P-Surge has been, let me go to the quad. So P-Surge has definitely been a victim of the issues on the Cray. Um, the developer has also had a baby in the, the time that the code was supposed to be delivered. Um, there's multiple reasons why this code has been delayed, but I just don't have strong confidence in any code delivery data been given. So I would rather say people who are waiting for P-Surge, you're going to wait. Is there anybody from MDL that can I, address I'm, it? I'm online. Uh, this is Steve Smith. Uh, so uh, this status as of this morning is uh, Arthur's preparing to package it up for uh, a delivery handover tomorrow. Um, there's a couple of other little things we're looking at, but uh, we're feeling pretty confident we can get a delivery tomorrow or handoff tomorrow. Great. We'll take it. And you are ready for the handoff. You have somebody to get the baton? We'll see. Yes, I think we can go back to the plan we had last week of combining this with the HSOFS. Yeah. But I have to check. Because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to combine it. The HSOFS is the NOS version of Storm Search. And they're going to run on all the same storms and all the same test cases. So we wanted to bundle them together and test them all together. Um, so if the SPA doing HSOFS hasn't started yet, and we have the code, and we review it, and it looks good, p -Surge can get back on track. If not, I, we will fit it in as soon as we can. But there are hey, other. This is Ben Kiger. Just, just you know, just to be transparent, we've been told a few times now we're getting the code tomorrow. We've, we've heard that a whole bunch of times, so we're a little skeptical. Un point. Understood. The understood, second, the understood Ben. Is, the second thing is, don't compromise quality to, to say we did a handoff. Make sure, <coughs> make sure Arthur is, is testing that out and it's solid and ready for handoff because it's. it's I don't want an illusionary handoff. I want a real one. Got it. Thank you very much. And NHC was, they, they had reached out this week. Um, Mark DiMaria was checking and, and saying, oh, well, yeah, we can make the graphic work with the 2015 version of PCER, or 2014 version. Okay. Um, so they're aware that there's this. Um, so, so. so they can use a previous version? The mm -hmm. 2017. Yeah, they're, they're prepared for that reality. If need be. If need be, yeah. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, so I mean, in terms of, in terms of uh, test data that comes out of the surge model that's going to go into the testing for, there's retrospective uh, cases that are being run. That's, that is how we do the testing for it, yep. Can no, no, but to feed, to feed the 2016 um, testing for the tropical season. So is the, is the test data, the retrospective test data that's being fed into the tropical program to kind of do the test for the 2016 hurricane season based off of this model? Or is it based off of the previous model? Dennis, do you know what I'm saying? I, I do, but I don't know the answer. 
uh, if they're using the older version or if they've started to use this. I mean, looking at here, it looks like their testing doesn't really begin till May with this okay. with this model. Okay. Well, that that NHC testing week. So what we've come to find out is each year there's a week where NHC does a bunch of testing and does can tests and things like that, and we've started to hook into that. To if we're able, we would love to run the HWARF, the GFDL, P surge. Now it'll be HSOFS. Um, the NHC guidance suite, all of this tropical <laughs> we've now got. Um, if we're up and running in time, we would fully participate in that week of testing. Yeah. Dave, I would think whenever, whenever <coughs> we're available to test for NHC that they would begin the testing if they had uh, access to it. So, But yeah. at minimal, they're, they're using the CAN, you know, the old so, search. So to what extent do you want to be um, r um, wrangled into the... Uh, Bi-weekly discussions on the tropical rollout at uh, NCO. Because Dennis, Dennis, and myself, and uh, Mark from the Hurricane Center and AFS and AWIS are getting together on a bi-weekly basis yep. to make sure I, we're ready for the tropical season. I, I think I'd like to be called in uh, uh, as necessary, Dave. As necessary, okay. Yeah, you right, let us know. We'll think we need to. Well, all right. I'll make sure they reach out with the schedule then next time. Yeah, we and have Dave, a just so you know, I do meet with NHC in advance of our larger group meeting with, with you and Andy. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll get some inside scoop sooner than, sooner than you, and I can always plug into uh, NCO down here too. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure Ben's not like finding out about all the testing uh, late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate cool. that, David. Yep. The other issue here is when I asked MDL for implementation priorities, this is not their number one grid lamp is. So if I only have one spot of work in MDL implementation, I have to give them a grid lamp based on the director's priorities. I don't think grid lamp is a, is a NOAA milestone. It's or actually an OP. Is it? Mm -hmm. That was why, that was when Mike Farah gave me the prioritization, he put grid lamp and said this is our AOP milestone. So, um, yeah. So that's P-Search. <coughs> Next. Um, combined wave ensemble. Um, what you're going to see is uh, later in Q4, we're going to try to do a big old wave model bundle. Um, this, this quad had been in here um, to work on this. What this is is this is FinMock and our wave ensemble combined, kind of like a nafe for the water. And um, the decision was made to not do it at this point, but to hold it for when we do the global wave ensemble upgrade, which was scheduled for later. So that's why this one slipped out so far. Yeah, the yellow bar on the <laughs> implementation, that yellow bar is long, right? So does that mean you're going to be spending? Yeah, because all the waves are supposed to come in June 1st. And then I think that's the typical, I think that's the 15 weeks. So, okay. I mean, okay. So if we decide to slip it, why not slip it another year? So... You know, how's that process rolling out? You know, if it, all right, so we slip it a little, you know, we're slipping until September. What if we slip it until next February to free up time? Are there other higher priority things in here that could use the spa attention? Well, but part of it is because we've combined it with all the other waves. It's, it, this piece is m something of a post-processing more than a full model. So if we do the Global Wave Ensemble, this comes along nicely with it. Okay. Um, so Part of the delay you say is packaging. Yeah. It just, we will actually my, spend... My, my bundle. Go ahead. Well, we will spend a lot more resources doing this as a one-off than to wait and do it along with a whole lot of other stuff. And, and, the, and the, bun the bundling should tentatively help us to reduce the amount of shared code that we need to maintain. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, next up is, all right, now we get to the, the big package, the RTMA, which is in support of, so the RTMA is, a lot of that is the terrain uh, update, and it comes along with the wrap and the hurt. Right. Where's the terrain update? Yeah, as far as, so we're, I mean, as, far as we're using the consolidated terrain, right, Jeff, with, we're trying to get that into our team. Or did we have a floor? No, we haven't done it. Okay. I think it's in the next one, isn't it? No, no uh, item one, consensus okay. topology and land sea map. We do so many of these each year. <laughs> <laughs> so so when we put in the blend in January, right. we 
the original goal had been to have the same terrain used across all the inputs to the blend, but we couldn't do that and get the blend in on time. So n th here's the RTMA doing it. You'll see the EKD MOS and Grid and MOS do it in later quads. <coughs> and it's um, getting into the RTMA via all the first guess fields that are used for the background for the RTMA. Right. And so that's why the RTMA is dependent on the next quad on wrap and burn. Right. But I mean, is the consolidated terrain done? I mean, do we have a... Yes. Yeah. It's okay. the one right. the blend group pedigree to. <laughs> so the wrap and the her are the, the big driver for this particular package. Um, this one has slipped out. We had um, code delivery delays from what we reported the last quarterly. We ended up getting it about a month later than, <coughs> than we thought. And then this is a big, I, you know, I had been giving it the usual 15 weeks and saying requires two spots for this work, and now we have one spot working on it. And it also got the RTMA, IRMA added, and it got some upgrades to the smart Inits added. So it is a monster package, so 15 weeks is um, overly optimistic for how long it takes to get this in. But it is running, um, mostly we're working some <coughs> interesting issue with running on phase two, slower than phase one, um, but it's, it's in the process of being set up. Uh, the 30-day will start in May, and we will implement hopefully the end of June. Okay, this is one, um, in ordering the data flow, I put it behind GFS, National Water Model. And right up there with it, those two. Yeah, so. So the parallel testing is starting in May? Yeah. Any of these, if we can get them going faster, we will, but that's what we're shooting for right now. Okay, next one is the, <laughs> the NAM MOS. Um, so this code we actually got in November. Uh, we were holding it at that point because we were still waiting to implement the... F so we, the NAM was split into three pieces. Um, each piece had certain elements. We had the first piece. We had a delay getting that implemented because of getting feedback from the field. Um, this code came in. We held it, and I said, well, I'm going to bundle the second delivery and the third delivery together. Then it was decided not to do the third delivery. Um, so now we are fitting this code we've had for a while in in a lull um, because there's something that got delayed a couple weeks and that spa could pick this up, get it set up, and let it run. CFS, was that something? Thank you. I couldn't remember what it was Voitech had. Yes. So we are actively working on this starting Monday. Um, and again, the, this will go pretty quickly. Yeah. <coughs> Um, as I mentioned, uh, the third upgrade to the NAM MOS has been pulled for this field. So that brings us to HSOFS. This is the new NOS storm surge. We have this code. Um, we did have, oh, this slipped the quarter. That's why. It's only, it was only about a two to three weeks delay, but it slipped into the next quarter. So we have the code in hand, We're starting to work it. Um, Say, <coughs> say that again? It, we have the code in hand. We're starting to work it. And we hope to implement in June. We're only talking about it. The fact that the next quarter. Oh, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it only slipped the, slipped the so it, week. It's within the same quarter. It's within the same quarter. It might have slipped a couple weeks. Oh. I think because the implementation date slipped almost a month. Code delivery. Yeah, so by the end of June, you're still in the same quarter. Yeah, so sorry. That's why. Sorry. So that's HSOFS. All right. Again, if we, when the P search comes in tomorrow, hopefully we can go back to our plan to do these two together, which may t make HSOFS take a little bit longer. Um, but again, we would use the same principle. If we're doing them together and either one of them exhibits significant issues, we'll uncouple them and go with the one that's, that's stable and ready and bring the other one along when it is ready. So. Grid lamp that we just talked about. Um, so this one, we this one we kind of owe an apology. We pushed this one out. Um, th there were a few 
few different reasons this code delivery got pushed out, and one of the things was this model needed to be, everything coming in now needs to be ported to the craze. In the process of doing that, we discovered that some of the infrastructure that this uses isn't available on the craze, so we have now said, with apologies to MDL, that this actually should stay on phase two at this point. Um, even with this schedule a couple days ago when we thought we were going to the craze, to be safe, we pushed the dates out um, to what our typical standard was, but um, MDL felt they could beat that code delivery date and we could still keep it in Q3. Um, now with this staying on phase two, I think we feel pretty good that this will actually stay in Q3 and not push out like we had said. So. So that's the 19 dates going to come back in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the 4-8 date for code delivery this is the, should come in. This uh, infrastructure thing that prevented it from going on the grid. Is that, could that apply to other models, too, or is it specific to this? It could. It, it's about how you make use of the buffer tanks. So the buffer tanks are still over on the IBM side, and they need to dump data out of it, and the tool to dump data out of it doesn't work on the CRAE yet. We're going to fix that. Uh, we will in time, but I mean that's that's an ops proc move, and they're not ready. You know, everybody, people are using each other's okay. stuff, and you can't necessarily expect another group to to port their thing on your timeline when they're interdependent. So it's kind of it's the way we decided <coughs> to spread the suite across the three components that we weren't moving decom, we weren't moving the tanks ahead of time. Um, but we want we need the flexibility to do that, obviously, because mm -hmm. eventually those machines go away. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so we set the uh, in terms of priorities, we said the gridded lamp was on the MC, on the weather service AOP list. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm looking at it. And I'm not finding. It may be on a weather service, but I don't think it would be on the one that went up to NOAA. Yeah, I'm looking at the weather <coughs> service, the complete list of That's weather service AOP priorities. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, upset a smaller, higher priority that go up to NOAA. And then I'm looking at the uh, the storm search, um, you know, extend P search forecast from 80 to 102 hours. Um, there's about three three priorities related to storm surge. Yeah. I see nothing related to lamp. So nothing just, to lamp? Yeah. So so in terms of kind of looking at priorities based on that question, mm -hmm. I, I would just, you know, there's, there's got to be I'm, some way we look back to see what the, if we're prioritizing what, what those are. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you, Dave. I, you know, I start with the directors of the development organizations um, and I, you know, I'm telling you, so if you guys if that. if you guys want to higher up change that priority, I will absolutely do what the highest one tells me. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, like I said, uh, Mike Farah gave that prioritization to me based on MDL's planning and stuff. So, if if you want to talk it over with him and you guys want to come back to me and tell me to flip the order, I don't I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bill. In, in a perfect sure we world, this would go to the MDC, right? The yeah. MDC would look at the priority list and help and, and help calibrate it. Yeah. yeah. So we were we were saying basically that I'm just recalling back to the earlier conversation is at some point we had a decision related to work on the P surge versus the lamp. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, Bill, we should think about that. Yeah. I think the MDC prioritization would be beneficial too because the way I do it is more organizationally structured. Like I say, okay, we're working this many EMC ones right now, we're working this many MDL ones right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that factors in yeah. who went to AOP and stuff like that. I'm, I'm more just trying to spread the spas across all the development organizations just equitably. Yeah. Yeah, back, Becky, we're kind of we face a similar thing on the A list side. Totally, <laughs> yeah. Totally um, understand what you're saying. I think, I think kind of with the governance structure, um, <coughs> and it's not like trying to say midstream, like get off the horse right now and do something different. But perhaps something to think about is 
kind of vetting that throughput of what we're dealing with. Because I think, you know, looking at the priority of the tropical and where that sits from a weather service perspective comparatively to this, uh, it would be interesting to, to look at. Mm -hmm. and, all right. And in theory, those things should all stem from the MDC and the AFS versus the, yep. each of the organizations. Yep. yep. Nobody, nobody disagrees here, Dave. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I was just looking. It's just comment. Okay. Next up is the H wharf, and the H wharf has been a horrible victim of the craze. Um, and actually, the H wharf group has been phenomenally helpful in helping us diagnose the issues with the craze. They're they're use of the system and, and information they've been able to give us to feedback to IBM um, has helped us get through some of the issues. So we're very grateful, but the impact has been they've pushed out their code delivery a month. Yeah, so typically we try to, to get that in before the beginning of the hurricane season, June yeah. 1, but yep. now we go a little bit longer into the season. Yep. So, so what, when we say it's a victim of the cray, is it the way the code's constructed to get the appropriate performance? Or is it no, no, not at all. The, we were having an issue on the craze where we couldn't schedule jobs. They would go into some weird unknown state. They would okay. take out the, the system. The system was actually very confused about whether nodes were available or not. So okay. it wasn't really anything particular to the H wharf at all. It was just they were the ones, pretty much the only ones using the system. Okay. So, they, they were the ones that managed to get on on day one because yep. of the original planning, and we, we planned for them to be very aggressive getting on that machine. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Totally okay. understand. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. So that, that's the plan for that. Um, I'm actually trying right now to plan some outages we have to take around the h Wharf team and helping them get that development done with as little disruption as possible. Um, next one was ECM WF Space Moss for the CONUS. Has Doing that? What was that removed? Um, uh, not expanding. Right. <coughs> I mean, is ECM boss wasn't going to go anywhere? Wasn't going to be disseminated? So okay. Really Part of the no policy. Yes. Policy. Yes. I think. Okay. Next is the any update, the yearly update to the NHC guidance suite. Um, this got pushed out. Mark De Maria has been waiting for a contract developer to come and help work on that, which is a good thing because he's been doing it a lot of a lot of it out of hide and, and just doesn't have the time. Um, so getting that person here, getting them on W cost uh, has pushed this out a little bit. We will be doing uh, we need to update the coefficients each year that it uses, so we'll do that before the season starts and then be working on this update uh, during the hurricane season. It's moving to the cray. It's uh, a lot more infrastructure stuff than science changes. So getting this space, so this is an upgrade of, you've already operationalized this, right? Correct. We did that last season. Got it. Yep. Uh, next is the GFS MOS. It was in the schedule right tied with the GFS fairly closely. Um, there was concern, you know, that, that the change in the GFS was going to impact the MOS. Um, that, that hasn't turned out to be the case. They, they are going to upgrade the equations, but it doesn't have to be in lockstep with the model upgrade. So now what they've done is they've pulled it out a little bit to combine it with the gridded MOS upgrade they're going to do. Um, so those dates have been synced up now. That will get the code in mid-April and then implement both a station and a gridded update in mid-July. In July? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I see it. Okay. Uh, the CFS, uh, it's been around for a bit. Um, we got at the end of December or end of February, we, we got the sign off of the CCB um, agreement between EMC and CPC to go forward. Uh, EMC has then been working on the code. Um, we've we need to have a little more discussion about the standards and and how we're going to fit this model, which is um, a bit unique into the standards and stuff. So we've, uh, we've pushed this out. I pushed this date out to May. Uh, we need to meet when I get back from vacation, agree to the scope of the standards we're going to do, and then they'll re-deliver. So an 18-month slip from the, we originally planned it in February of 15, right? If I'm reading that operational yes. implementation line, right? Yes. So we're now at 18 months from what we originally had hoped to get it in. You can see the code delivery 
was maybe December 2014. Oh, yeah, it goes back to 14 even. Yeah. Well, we had a lot. It took a long time to do those reruns. And then uh, it's there's, some, there's some other things too. I mean, we had the issue with the fact that uh, we had this massive El Nino coming up. We wanted to do some. We, we agreed upon doing significantly additional testing. After that, uh, we were not willing to to uh, to uh, create a uh, potential changeover in the middle of. of uh, so so this is this is not a this is not just a modeling issue. This is a coordinator between CPC and, and EMC to to deliberately have this slip. To deliberately. Have because of the El because, because because of the fact that we didn't want to do this this change over the middle, middle of a massive El Nino. Yeah. So how does the SST gold bias fit into this? And again, is this? I'll, I'll take it offline. I have questions about this because it's been on our radar screen for a while. Um, significant upgrade that includes. So I want to understand that a little bit better. And I know there's the science quarterly coming up. Will this be presented at the Science Quarterly? Are you put it on the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Well, it applies to the current operational model. The current system. <laughs> to this is operational. So, so it would be uh, in the system. Oh, yes. Yeah. An upgrade to the existing. Two point two. That's right. You just need yeah. The yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. That it has the cold box. Yeah, so nothing in here fixes the cold box. Right. Right. And so whether we do that fix to the version <coughs> operation or try to do it with this, well, Kendra, it doesn't matter. Well, Kendrick has a budget. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's, yeah. it's irrelevant which system you do it to. It's <coughs> the same fix. Right. Uh, and it's not a fix of code. It's not a fix of the right. structure. It's just a reinitialization, and, and that, has, that does not change at all systems. <coughs> I think the quick option <coughs> doing it to the current operational. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Next one is. Um, an upgrade to ETSS, the storm, the extratropical storm surge, and then the introduction of the new probabilistic extratropical storm surge. Um, so this code delivery has pushed out uh, about six weeks. Um, I put in the typical schedule of we get the code delivery, start working on it, we implement it. But this is one that's going to come in. This is I don't I don't remember if this was three or four in MDL's priority list, but likely we would get this code and we would sit on it for a while um, waiting for a spa to open up. Um, I put in the issues and risks that it did not have, we didn't have HPC RAC approval because I, at the time I asked the question, they, they do, we went back and found it, I actually found it this morning, they do have HPC RAC approval for PETS, PETSS, so we're good there. Um, so it's just a case of when we get the code and we have resources available, we will start working it. From a process standpoint, the, and I haven't been in any HPC RAC meetings in a while, uh, is that the first step? I mean, because it I'm is thinking, why did you get, why would we have gone through all this if we didn't have approval for the 12 nodes yet? But yet it's good to hear that. At it, this point, it, what I'm doing, if I see anything new, if I get wind of anything new for the production suite, I, I am now sending them to the rack. New the model. New model. Or, or, or some dramatic increase in resource that's sort of not customary. Yes. And I think this 12 triggered that, right? Well, no, this is because it's new. The 12 is oh, brand is new. So the PETSS part is new. Gotcha. So, but yeah, the rack approved that, so we're good there. So when we get the code, we'll work it in. Oops. So a long-term long question is, I mean, we're feeling our way through how the process works. So we've sort of ad hoc decided to run that through the HPC rack. The question really is in the new governance, does that go to an August council, does it go to the HPC rack? Ideally. And that is something that, that needs to be figured out at the weather service level. But yes. And yeah. to your point, I've already seen, uh, I think, a surge in extra tropical, you know, so we've got a number of different independent systems for, for guidance for the same parameter. And so it begs the question, as you say, Hendrick, where's the, where's the long-term strategy to, you know, simplify and unify these different pieces? Um, and so, you know, is this, where's the requirement? You know, the MDC needs to understand these things. And, and it shouldn't be at the HPC RAC level. The HPC RAC should not see this until it's been approved by the agency. And then yeah, if there's an the, allocation requirement, then it makes it happen. The, 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 the good part of this is that we are actually having 
corporate eyes on it right now. Right. The, the, the question mark is where it fits in the new organization. Right. The HPC rack is the lever I know how to pull. So that's where I'm going. When you give me another lever, I will go there. The purpose of the HPC rack is to enable, to make sure that <laughs> you know, by the time that you get to the HPC rack, it should be approved and supported right. from an agency perspective and level. And then, you know, the HPC rack is more of a kind of a monitoring to make sure people are getting access to the resources that are required for them to deliver what the agency wants them to deliver. Do you think it'll be when we have the new implementation process that we get involved with the MDC, or is there some plan in motion it's to? Evolving. It's evolving. We figured it out. Okay. Well, you see more and more things getting pointed there. It, it, it'll come. Okay. Let me know when to so do it. We keep using the processes. Exactly. Okay, this is my only green quad I'm showing you, and the only reason I showed it to you, it's, it's on schedule, but they did add a bunch of stuff to the scope, so I threw it in. Um, this is a GFDL. Uh, they only pushed out like two weeks on their code delivery, and we're just syncing up the time. Before we were going to offset the HWARF and the GFDL because they were coming in offset enough, but now they've come together, and so we'll... Same implementation date, if I remember the HWARF date. Yep. It's 21. That's the plan. So... Next up is the NAM. The NAM pushed out. Oh, the NAM. Okay, the NAM pushed out a month. Um, so the the risk here is the conversation we have. Um, the um, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> I've been meeting with the team all week, and uh, we need to push it out a little bit more. Okay. The uh, we have two issues. One is we're still struggling with a robust solution to the Joaquin failures. Oh. That has turned into a real hornet's nest. Uh, back in October, we had a failure, and we had a, a, a solution which we called the sledgehammer. We <laughs> called it the hammer of God, I think, something like that. Um, and we, we felt we understood that and had our arms around it, but the, the more we struggle with that, the more we realize we don't have our arms completely around it. We don't have a completely robust solution. I'm not comfortable putting in the solution, the so upgrade at this point. When you say failure, you mean the model crapped out. Yeah. <coughs> not a force of simulation. Model failure. Model Re pressure. Repeatedly. <laughs> for days. <laughs> yeah. So we've been working on that. Um, the, uh, we have the hourly NAMRR is running. Uh, the scores are all comparable or better than the HER, except for precip. I need precip to be at least as good. So evidence-based. That's why we're, we're doing the evidence-based before we make the final decision on that. So, I and we'll be we are still working back and forth with the other two organizations. Still. Is it better than the the operational HER or the yeah. experimental? I don't have numbers for the experimental. Because all those numbers were done at ESCO. And, 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 the, and the hard part of that is that uh, uh, it's not a question of whether the NAMRR is better than the HER. It is, uh, if they are of comparable quality, the real question is going to a two-core two ensemble short-term. So it's, it's, not, it, it's not that clear that in these discussions. And, that is something that the MDC would like to see. Sure. And that's something that... That I, would probably I, be... Not just that. This is, some, this is something that is enough uh, contentious that it's the yeah. perfect place to go to. <coughs> because this is something that should not be so, thrown anywhere as a one-sided decision. And yeah. you need to let... When would you like to go before the MDC with that? Is that a June? May? Just you don't have to decide here, but Hendrick. Right. Well, we're, I, we're, I would say I would this say is on the quarterly science quarterly. Okay, for sure the NAMRR piece. All right, um, but is it does the MDC meet every month? Yeah. Oh, okay. well, sometimes way, way more often even than that, depending on twice this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll pick that up offline. Right. I don't want to brief it until I've got this. Solution. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is NAFE V6. Um, this pushed out because we had we had a delay in the V5, which had a delay because of the guest delay. So it's just you know they're pushing out in time. So just readdress this. These are these are the times of the, these are the types of delays that should be addressed when we do that. V5 
we get work through the implementation process charter. And this is one of those domino ones. Okay. Um, the next one was the multi two, the hurricane wave upgrade. This has been removed because um, Rune is saying uh, the next step will be the coupled coupled with the H wharf, right? Yeah. Okay. And eventually, we should be able to actually remove this com not station, but remove the moss. Yep. So this, this is one of the one of the early examples of where we are going to simplify the model suite by having all these cascades of downstream models, having everything integrated together where it makes sense. Okay. Is the upgrading the CCPA also bundled with this one? No, that was bundled, that's bundled with the week five, okay. which actually it briefs this afternoon and goes that's in right. Tuesday. Right. Okay. Yep. Oh, so this is... <laughs> All right, so we're doing. I, I backed up. Okay. Sorry. We're back. We're doing V5. That's the briefing today. Later yeah. today for V5, yeah. and this is already right on its heels. Yes. I thought we're gonna do one a year. Well, but but this one, the, the five is way delayed because of the gas delay. <coughs> and and so that means that the five and the six have come really close together, even bumping the six out a little bit. But we're not willing to bump it out to be another year. All right. I think one of the things here they're trying to go to the half degree. Yep. Everybody in NAFES get to half degree. So, okay. So that was Q3. Uh, I had a I had a few things here on Q3. Uh -huh. Just holistically, Phil. Yep. Just, um, um, just kind of looking back at uh, the the weather service AOP for what it's worth. Um, we had the uh, the GFS. Um, upgrade in Q3, which also included the MOS upgrade in there, in that listing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, H Wharf was on the Weather Service AOP for Q3, which looks good, but it's right up against the boundary, so if that slips anymore. Yes. The geospace was slated for Q3, and it looks like Q4 now. Um, and then we had the, the P surge was um, in there for Q3, and we're going to miss that one. For Q3, and then the water forecast looks fine. So just as a kind of an overarching piece. Um, no, Dave, that's typically the check that we do do. So I'm glad you pulled that out. I don't have it in front of me because typically I do have it in front of me to, to do that cross check. But yeah, those are the big ones that we're on the hook for. So the two the two red ones, at least at this point, that we're saying we're going to miss are the P surge is going to slip a quarter comparatively to the AOP and the geospace. Is going to slip, and then, yes. Um, if we slip the H wharf by another uh, week and a half, it'll go into Q4, and that'll uh, that'll be read on the AOP. And then the GFS is a NOAA milestone, but it's listed as 40 ensemble var plus moss upgrade. Yeah. And then the only other question I had, based on kind of the movement of the moss, is are we coordinating the dependency between GFS and the GFS MOS such that we don't have any sort of issue with delays yep. implementing the GFS. Yeah, they, they, they actually, um, MDL had gotten retrospective data a couple months ago. Yeah, we, we took care of that up front that we knew we had to know whether the MOS had to be upgraded in tandem or not, and it turned out yes. that it didn't, that the model change wasn't significant enough that the equations had to be redeveloped on implementation day. For the existing MOS, the idea. Correct. Yep, the existing MOS equations, yep, applied to the new GFS are not a significant deterioration. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right, cool. So, so back on, on to Dave's comment about the two that looks like that will slip, the P-surge and the geospace, and I don't know at it, 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 this time and day if there's anything that we could do to try to accelerate them to get them back on track, knowing that those are the yeah. high visibility ones. Yeah, the question I had, Dennis, was, just to go back to um, kind of what we uncovered in the briefing here is what was the issue that um, MDL was prioritizing the work of the gridded lamp over moving the P-surge forward? Or is it that do you have what you need for the P-surge or are you kind of waiting for MDL on that, Becky? I'm waiting for MDL. We don't have the code from them yet. Correct. And and when you referenced kind of that trade-off, you said that 
that was kind of a conscious decision that MDL made in terms of what code they're working first? No, I don't think, no, the, the development efforts, MDL folks can jump in, but I mean the development efforts within MDL for LAMP and PSearch are completely separate. That's that's correct. That's that's correct, Dave. Okay. Not, All right. Not, so what what was the dependency between so the, the two when you the dependency it? was me saying if I have six spas, I can't work on five MDL implementations at the same time. So put them in order. And they told one to five. Which one? Yep. And they and yeah. and I said you get one for sure, maybe two at a time at the most. So but given even, even if you were to reprioritize it, you don't have the code yet for P search. Correct. I should get it tomorrow. To so, Dennis, that might be one thing you want to look at is the prioritization there with MDL because if, if, if you're going to miss the AOP milestone, which also probably pushes you into some issues with tropical versus the gridded lamp. Yeah, that's two, two components there. When did you get the prioritization? Probably about a month ago. Okay. Month yeah. Ago. Okay. Yeah. But the point Becky? well taken. In yeah, Judy. Um, so just to jump in, um, I didn't I didn't speak up earlier because I was sending emails trying to figure out what was going on about the AOP. I yeah. think there's some confusion in that um, the gridded lamp is an MDL AOP milestone, um, and it let me see, it's not an MPI AOP milestone. However, it's MDL one. Oh, uh, so okay. Weather service one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Thank when, you, Judy. <laughs> when we gave feedback to Mike for prioritization, I think that it was mentioned and conveyed that it's a MDL AOP, and he perhaps took that to mean it was something else, yeah, something okay. higher up. So yep. that may be why it got priorita prioritized higher than P-Surge. It also probably had to do with the fact that we felt pretty confident at yeah. that point yep. when the Cray stuff came up okay. that um, we'd be able to hit the date that we had projected. So I think there's some confusion there about the AOP. So okay. I hope that Thanks, clear, Judy. clarifies things. That's true. Not all AOPs are created equal. <laughs> so, correct. So well, they're but they but the hierarchy of them is right. <laughs> so so, uh, so I think at this point to date, kind of based on what Judy's saying, is they haven't yet kind of collided to even affect with the priority. But it sounds like they are going to soon. When they get to Becky, they're going to collide, and she's going to have to make a decision. Yeah, and, and I can tell you that, you know, if, if P-Search has a priority, that's fine for gridded lamp. So that's do, your go. do you want to tell me, my boss's boss, that I should do P-Search first? As a pope, and what's the compromise? Gridded lamp? Gridded lamp. Given, yeah, and yes, P-Search. Okay, and if I don't have P-Search code, that I can start working on next week, I, and I get lamp code in hand, I will come back to you and ask you what I should do then. Because yeah. that's the other problem. Yeah, clearly if you get the lamp code I first. can I can plan my whole life around these dates, and I so your decision you, they all... <laughs> they all just... So, so as an outcome of this meeting, send a note to Mike Farr. Who is, who is the MDL director? Oh, so that's Mike, right. Mike, Mike was on a detail. So is it... It's going to be... Uh, Date, Dave Ruth. Yeah. Send an email to Dave Ruth telling him that effect that on March, whatever Monday is, uh, P surge. Uh, you need the code by then. P surge is a high priority for the agency. We need that code now. <coughs> and yep. please assist in having MDL deliver. Yeah. Can you CC Bill and I both on that one, please? <coughs> <coughs> The only th the only other thing I would suggest with from an NCEP kind of MDL interaction right. is making sure that the the versioning of um, the P surge and kind of the implementation schedule for the tropical program that NHC and the National Tropical Program is expecting kind of have that in sync to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah, two drivers. One, the P-Surge is an AOP milestone this year, and second is the ramifications or impact it has on meeting the uh, Storm Surge Watch Warning right. implementation. That's the two connections. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to make sure we've checked that so that it's not like, oh, wow, we didn't think of that connection. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is we do this with P-Surge every year. NCO is pressured to get P-Surge in on time when it's late, 
every year. And so I give credit, this year the quad, if you look at it, we were going to get code in December. So I think the idea is out there that for this stuff that needs to come in for hurricane season, you can't give it to me in April or uh, Yeah. So but we're not executing that. So with, with, with all due respect, this is exactly this is exactly why we're re swizzling the process. Yes. And, and part of it part of it is to have uh, the, the same expectations for all bits and pieces of organization. Yes. And, yeah, and, and, and we we this is not this is not a Ding on any organization, but but particularly the the quote unquote outside organizations that implement things uh, have, have we we've not given them the right expectation about how uh, how uh, serious we are about delivery days like that. And the that same things the same things is. happening on the uh, and I'll be done. The same things happening on the A website, and that's what Dennis and I and and Andy have been working on, trying to get things uh, get that stuff <coughs> broken. And we're Great. we're having some success there. It's a little bit rough this year. That's why I think there's just some extra coordination there. But going into 17 and 18, I think we're breaking the cycle of getting stuff late into development yep. and having the rush towards hurricane season. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I know we're anxious to get to the fourth quarter, but one more uh, oh, sure. follow-up on the two then that is weather service or corporate uh, milestones. The geospace then was the second one. So at least we've got a plan uh, to for, for the weather service milestone, it was ge not a NOAA, but a weather oh, service. Oh, okay, it was a weather service Geos one. Geospace mm -hmm. for Q3 on the okay, that, weather and, service AOP. Okay, so th this uh, says it's going to be done by, uh, okay, it's slipped to the third quarter. Uh, Geospace is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you tell me, I've got, you've got the quad, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's slipped to the third uh, quarter. From the second to the third. I don't know at this May. point. Evaluation yeah. has been May. done. If there's anything Control. this late that. Control. No, it's 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 internal SWIPSI evaluation. So. Okay, they're the only ones. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's May. That's my bad. I read it as. We're good with that one. Yep. We're good. Great. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Yep, my apologies. Okay, Q4. This, this will go pretty quickly because, like I said, you don't see the slips until we get closer to code delivery date. Um, everything's. Pretty much still in the quarter except global RTOBs. We talked about that that because of the previous version, we can't get it in. This one's pushing out. Um, the couple quads I will talk about. Uh, the, the one that gets my attention there is the blend. Hands down, top priority. And right? It's running on the crayon. Beautiful. And a milestone, AOP milestone. <laughs> okay. All right, and you know it's delivered at the end of the quarter, so we got to we got to do everything we As can to accelerate it. And hit in the middle of the quarter instead of the end, right? So you guys, I know. <laughs> yep. <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. So um, the Global Wave Ensemble, uh, this code delivery pushed out two months. I, I don't remember why, um, but this is one of them you'll see. Like I said, they all all the waves honed in on June first. So I said, all right, we're just going to do one big wave upgrade. So we've got the Global Wave Ensemble and the Great Lakes Wave. And the multi one, and we might if multi two multi two will still be around, so we'd probably pull it over to the cray, um, and do those all together. So these are the, the Great Lakes and the uh, Wave Ensemble flip two months, so that's their new place. That should that should mean that uh, <coughs> we're actually almost in the ideal EE world that we have only one set of uh, mm -hmm. of shared codes, so not versions of all the versions lay, laying around. Yep, and we gave the general wave code to the application analysts to help with the porting to the CRAE, so that should um, smooth that along as well, which is good. I think they actually reported yesterday they finished. So it's good. Um, why is this one here? I'm sorry. The blend's not supposed to be here. That one's done earlier, if you look, from July 31st yeah. to July 20th. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> They're good. Um, and then the RTOP Global pushed out, like I said, um, because of its predecessor version. Okay, so those were the ones I had. I had nothing for Q1 last time. These are the new quads people gave me for this quarterly, um, and they end up interspersed all over the place. So this is the next version of the mag after we get 3.9 in. Are these unscheduled, or are these Q1 of these, uh, Like I said, these, these fit in throughout the year. Um, they, yes, they were unscheduled. I have put them into the schedule. For this year, oh, this year. Mean, yeah, there's one. That's yeah. July. So this is July. This would be the next version of the mag after we put three ten, three nine in. Wait, 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 wait. 
Where's, I'm sorry. Where is this scheduled for? So, okay, let me jump forward for a second. You'll see them um, in the end when I show you the end. See, uh, a lot of them are down there to the right, but like this one. So, so we're looking at Q1. Um, it, it depends. Some people give me quads they want implemented this quarter. <laughs> so, so you're putting in the uh, a version I'm, of the okay. mag update. So, this month or I'm just showing you these as these are new quads given to me in the last month to include in the quarterly. They might go in any quarter, but I'm bundling them all together and saying these are the new implementations I've been asked to do. How could you possibly throw them in a schedule that exists? Right? I mean, you've got yourself pretty well. What does that do to your resources right that are working the other so way? Why is it? Like, can you accelerate them in a cycle for them? <laughs> I, I I throw them in and see how it turns out. <laughs> I I can reject them all and send them back. Well, I mean, it's notional. You don't have any work for it, but somebody's obviously doing the work, right? Yes. So okay, just go ahead. Okay, so we've got the next version of the mag. Um, we have Which is two versions ahead of where we are today. Yes. Correct. Yeah. The next version of the CMAC. Now this is in 17, because October is the first quarter okay. of 17. Yeah. And they actually had this quad the last time. I just got it a week after the quarterly. So this has been around a while. You just didn't see it last time. Okay. Um, we've got sea ice concentration upgrade that we'll do over the summer, we put in in September, and the RTG SST analysis update. Um, these look to be mostly technical refreshes of um, satellite data use, so you probably won't see these. We won't, probably won't brief you, um, but I'm putting the quads in there to reflect that spa resources have been requested. Can you just go back to CS for a second? Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. All right. Hendrik, do you know, does this take care of the issue that we've been having occasionally where ice appears in the concentration where there is no ice? Uh, that has always to do with the, uh, with the cloud uh, yeah. thing, so it may it. help it a little, but you'll never, ever completely use it. But I, I think he mentioned that in the EE coordination meeting. Yeah, I, I, I was just wondering. Yeah. The better, it, it should, it, it, I don't want to suggest that it's going to be always gone. This should improve it because the fact that we, this is really uh, uh, essential to go to the, the new satellites, the better. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So, so it should definitely improve, but, but it's always a weather filter issue. Okay. All right. That, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but definitely talk with Bob Grumbine about it. You've got questions? Hey. Uh, TGSP, I mentioned. Uh, this is a MOS upgrade for aviation elements specifically, and it's going to be combined, yes, with the gridded MOS upgrades for the blend. I mean, basically, we kind of expect we're going to get a bunch of the inputs for the blend right around any time we do the blend. So, RTMA, EKD MOS, gridded MOS. Um, Arc speaking, there you go, RTMA. <laughs> this is the next RTMA upgrade. It would come out in January of 2017. Um, another lamp and gridded lamp upgrade in <coughs> February. So these actually, the January, February ones are quarters I didn't ask for last time. And then this is a new one from AWC, uh, moving their SIP FIP processing from locally to uh, WCOS, we're having a little bit of discussion about doesn't the GFS already do this? So, so NCO may kind of push on that a little bit and throw that back to AWC and EMC to discuss. But um, it just came to us with the quad, so we're we're still digging in on this one. And that's the picture. Hey, I had a few questions. Okay. So. So Bill and Dennis kind of, again, doing this uh, kind of AOP bingo sort of thing. I'm looking through the AOP. Um, there's one in here, just kind of reading the, the one that I don't see in the quad charts that are kind of queued up that are in there for Q4. They may be WCOS implementations. They may not, but let me just rattle through them. So yeah, go ahead. Implement experimental PM 2.5 prediction for CONUS, Q4. 
We did that. That's a funny one. Yeah, we put that in on WCOS. It's, it's more a case of it being designated, being blessed on the headquarters side. So it's done? So are we yep. implemented? It's, okay. it's implemented. It's implemented. Maybe. <laughs> they just wouldn't call it okay. on that's the web page. Cool. All right. right. That's, yep. that's why the, the new quad talks about improving PM, uh, yeah. which is in quarter four or one of seven. Bottom, bottom line, experimental PM guidance is done. operational. Yep. Okay. It's done. Yep. All right. Experimental national cloud and visibility guidance products available for field evaluation. That may be a non WCOS thing, an AWC thing. It sounds like an AWC thing, Dave. I'll check on that. Okay. And then uh, this might be kind of deployed on the supercomputer, but may need the field deployment, but complete NWS. NWPS deployment at 35 coastal WFS. That might just be outreach. And so NWPS is in there. It just it hadn't flipped, so that's why you didn't see it. But it is uh, da, 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 um, two thirds of the. Oh, if I get up and point, you can't see me, Dave. It's about two thirds of the way down there. It's going in in September. I know initially it Q4. went to two sites, and then the plan was to all the coastal there's, sites. There's, there's, there's a few things mixed up here. So. Um, the official implementation was to show it at two offices working properly. Right. And the next the next month or two, and which is which is underway right now, is to move the other twenty or so. Oh, I'm sorry. I I missed. She was asking about the twenty three. Yeah, the twenty three. The twenty three should be in by now. And then the next step is to go to the west coast. Yeah. And for the west coast, uh, uh, we have to figure out how to do that. But we're already running all the west coast offices in EMC parallel. It's, it's really a question of adding applications. It's not, it's not a serious change to the operational system. It's just adding more WFOs to work on that. So Dave, please reread the milestone. Uh, complete the MWPS deployment at 35 coastal WFOs. So the 35 means the West Coast included. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. 224, 30. Yeah. And so will we meet it? The answer is? So 1.1, 1 .1, which is Western Region Alaska, is sep mid-September. So if, it, if it was by the fourth quarter, then we're on track, Dave. Okay. Yeah, and Andre, Andre and Roberto are already running all the West Coast ones. I have to check the Alaska ones, but we're already running all the West Coast ones in the in the EMC parallel, so that was really good. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so the reason we didn't hear it here, Dave, just so you know, we, we talked about the ones that had slipped, and yep. that one's still on schedule. That's why you didn't see it here. Yeah. Okay. But thanks great. for bringing it up. Great. Uh, and then two more, I think. Let's see. Uh, implement this. Implement uh, ensemble-based probabilistic lightning density guidance. Is that an SPC one? No. An SPI one. I don't know where that is. Lightning density. It doesn't have a responsible program manager on it, but it's in the NWS. You might want to check on that. Make sure it doesn't get stuck to you. <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good cross-reference. And then we're going to be cross-referencing for the QPR at the end of April as well. Right. Yeah, Make I got sure one. we walk in there with boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I got one more, Bill. All right. Uh, for Q4 and the last one, and I'm done. Uh, enhanced uh, NMME seasonal forecast system Q4. Looking at Dave DeWitt. Got his name yeah, that's, that's not going to have anything to do with W cost, Dave. Okay, that, that's, that's fine. Uh, We're doing it. Yeah, that's internal. Well, yeah, that'll be done. That's yeah. fact that's already done. Though. Okay, <laughs> now, I just want to make sure. Want to make sure Becky's got everything yeah. she needs. Yeah, we can put it on W cost if you like. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It, it needs to go on W cost. Otherwise, I'm going to cut off their access to the production machine. This is one of those quasi prod things that a center insists on having access to the production machine to meet their mission. And we've said anything that qualifies as that needs to come into the NSA production suite. NMME is not. I don't. Not going to engineer. So right. we can have that discussion. Wait, no, we have. Related to the milestone. Yep, that's okay. fine. Yep. Yeah, it's just we, we haven't had time to do it. Yeah. Okay, so. Done? I am, yes. Very nice. I'm done, I'm done too, Bill. I, so. I will say this this picture often doesn't scare Stephen and I like usually they do. Okay. What scares me is everything that's not on that picture. All the work is up front. And yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, if so, we take a year off from the Shref and the Guess and the NAM and the well, GFS, this, I love this schedule. Okay, so this is where I'm going. <laughs> All right. 
So first of all, I commend you. We're getting, I think we're getting a lot more <coughs> focused on schedule than we have been in the past. This helps. I like this. It's mm -hmm. working out nice. And what it really points to now is looking at what we talked about with the, the allocation resources for the backup for, for 17 and 18, right? Because I see a lot of things in here, and yet we already know that come, you know, Q2 of 17, there's going to be some big honkers in there. Where's What's the plan for the SHREF? What's the plan for the GIFs? And the reforecast now that we're required. So we got to start to do that allocation planning, Hendrick, yep. um, which means the implementation this is process exactly. We're, 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 we're uh, pretty close, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but between the MCO and EMC to have the entire work plan for, for working that quad out and getting all these things in place. So well, no, we're going too slowly, though. Yeah, we're so going really correct. slowly. We need to expedite <laughs> that. Us. We're, not, we're not living up to our, what we said. So what I want to do, we're going to start to have bi-weekly updates on that project because it is absolutely critical mm -hmm. to mapping out the resources required for doing things we think we're going to do and perhaps some things we're not going to be able to do. So we, you know, I think we got the front end pretty well locked down now. I feel pretty good about where we are understanding it. But it's the out years now we got to get a, a better handle oh, on. Absolutely. So, so one piece on that, too, is... Um, yeah, I, right. I hear Ben. I hear Ben saying, um, you know, um, we got to make sure we're we're moving out appropriately on that and having the right quality of information. But in terms of messaging for mid-April, um, we don't necessarily have to kind of display anything there in the AOP meeting. But I think setting an expectation in terms of how how we kind of play traffic <laughs> cop in terms of making <laughs> implementations through. At a, at a not telling you not telling the weather service what those implementations will be and exactly what the schedule looks like, but more of here's how we're going to conduct business. I think would be a good storyline for either you, Bill, or if you want me to highlight that, just to good. set the expectation. It, it, within the QPR framework or outside of it? No, within the within the AOP 2017 planning. Ah, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's got yeah. an hour. No, that's that's, that's there. That's a good idea, Dave. So we don't need to show the schedule, but just to show, like, hey, we're going to get, we're going to ratchet this thing down with some higher level of process to make it more sane. Yeah, so we're going to work with you on that to make sure we have a good, clear message okay. on where we are. Yeah. Um, All right, great. Because I am, I'm getting nervous because 17 is right around the corner and there are some huge expectations for some of these systems. I'm just telling you I'm, I'm willing to help you Keep things at bay. If you good luck with Louis, I think he's going to be looking for the <laughs> for the quarterly implementation schedule based on experience. But it goes to you know what Jeff Demago just said to me is you know it, it's about scheduling the major systems, the ones that require the largest amount of computational resource to develop, test, and implement. Yeah, maybe schematically you can show yeah, them we, graphically we, that yeah. rather than yep. so. Yep. And that's basically the back of the back of the napkin that you did before. But it, I, I, yeah, I know, I know that the the big stones in the jar are going to be the most important part. But we need to do this all the way through because we've had a lot of frustration, <laughs> at least on, on, on our side, with the smaller <coughs> implementations that they don't feel that they have a real place. And and I know that's not true, but but, yeah, but it I gives us an opportunity to clean the whole thing up, not just the big ones. I think the big problem is we're we're on the two-year plan that I originally projected. That's the pace. You want a one-year pace. You turned a quarter already, so we have to pick up the pace here. That's if we're going to get expectations. Well, and that's that's a, I mean planning the work, right? So the development labs have to make sure that they you know it comes to scope, right? You know planning the work better to meet deadlines. Talking about the project, project to change our process. Yeah, that's what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, and that that will enable that will force the the planning of the work to be more succinct. Yeah, meet deadlines. If you don't meet deadlines, it's done. All the benefits we talked about. Yeah, about. exactly. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? This I love this meeting. <laughs> me too, Dave. Let me tell you. <laughs> you made my day, Dave. You can do them weekly instead of quarterly. No. Uh, no. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.